Let me tell you a little bit about me. I was a student at Penn State from 1985 to 1989. And I think I was at the forefront of number one, women in engineering. Number two, kind of changing the profile of what an engineer is, what an engineer looks like, and trying to break those stereotypes. And by the looks of this crowd, there's a lot of stereotype breakers out there today. Engineering is not a page out of the Revenge of the Nerds. Engineers leads to a number of different huge career opportunities. Engineers change the world. Engineers drive innovation. And for me, 23 years later, I am incredibly proud to be an engineer. Sometimes you have to solve problems, right? So you're going to learn a tremendous amount of technical content over the next four years. And you know, I gave you the example about Diffie Qs and how that, I never used it, but I learned a whole lot in my technical coursework that I did apply, right? I learned primarily, whether it be in my math courses, whether it be in my material science courses, how to solve and use that information and that technical competency to solve problems. It could be in a lab assignment that I receive. I know that you guys have a, a, a really cool problem solving exercise that you guys are doing now, right? You get like snippets of coursework, and then you have to create, what, a hovercraft of some sort? And you don't have a whole lot of constraints on how you solve that problem. That is so cool, because you could be totally innovative. But that's technical problem solving. The problem solving I want to talk about is a little more subtle. I ran into a situation, it was my junior year. I looked and saw how many credits I had. I saw that I had two years to finish my degree. Um, and my dad was unemployed. So if I didn't finish, my parents had saved money, fortunately, for me to go to school. But they had saved enough money for me to go for four years. So I had to figure out how I was going to complete a whole lot of coursework in two years. First thing I tried was taking 19 credits in one semester. Do any of y'all have 19 credits this semester? It's probably good your freshman year first semester, you don't have 19 credits. My typical load was about 15. Is that what you guys are taking now, about 15 to 17 credits? That's about normal. So I decided that one semester I was just going to plow it on. And it was my junior year, so I had a huge amount of 300, maybe 400 level courses in my major. So it was a huge load to carry, and I worked my tail off. I did a whole lot of field plowing that semester. I did very little socially and a whole lot of time in the stacks, just, which is the library at Penn State, just getting through my content and getting through those courses. And I think I had six finals. It was brutal. So I learned. I said, well, I'm not doing that again. I'm not going to take 19 credits every semester until I graduate. So I started taking summer school, which allowed me then to finish my major on time and move into the career aspects and portion of my life. Now, was that a technical problem to solve? No, I had to figure out, it was a life problem. I had to figure out how to fit all this material in. I had to figure out how to pay for the courses in the summer by working during the day and going to school at night. I guarantee you, if you walk into an interview after four years from now, and your interview at, interviewer asks you, give me an example of where you solved a problem, and you respond by saying, let me give you two. Let me give you one technical problem that I solved. And let me give you one problem that I encountered in my life and how I worked through it. You'll blow them away. Because everybody is expecting that response to be technical, not life related. Sometimes you got to plow fields. Sometimes you got to solve problems, not only technical, but within your life. 